Hello, today we're going to take a look at how you can have a rotating banner on the landing page, the home page for your SharePoint sites. The idea is instead of having a static page which does never change, you can have the opportunity to show a page that looks different. It's refreshed with a new look by using a new banner. You can make this happen automatically using a Power Automate flow. It's pretty easy to set up and it's something that will keep your users more engaged and make things look a little bit more interesting. So now, let's get SharePoint smart. Alright, let's start out by showing you what it is that we're setting out to accomplish. So this page should look pretty familiar to you. This is a standard landing page for a SharePoint team site. And typically, we just have a nice looking banner that we pick, but it doesn't ever change. And so that's what we're setting out to make different. We want this banner image to refresh and keep changing for us automatically. It'll make things a little more interesting and dynamic for our user interface. So let's begin by seeing what's going to happen and then I'll walk you through the steps so you can set this up for yourself. So I've got a flow um, that's set up to run on a schedule. You can have it reoccurring however often you want, um, but I'm going to go ahead and manually trigger it just to show you what's going to be happening. So. If I go to the home page of the site, you're going to notice that it just changed. Now I have a different banner image, and just to do that one more time, um, we'll do this again. I'll show you that it once again has a new banner image. You can see this flow takes about one second to execute, so it's pretty efficient, which is nice. So if I click on home, you can see now we have another new banner image. Okay, so Full disclaimer, I do want to start out by saying there is not an easy way to specifically change the banner on a landing page, which is a little bit counterintuitive. I looked at different posts about this and it's surprisingly inaccessible to be able to do that. So we're using a bit of a workaround and our workaround is that instead of specifically changing the banner image we're going to change the home page for the site automatically and so we're going to make a home page set up that we like and we're going to make copies of it so you can see in my site pages directory in fact i've made clones if you will i've made copies of the home page and what our workflow is going to do is automatically cycle through these different copies of the home page and of course each of those is going to have its own uh, unique different banner image which I'll set myself. So let's begin with the initial setup. What you're going to need to do is go and create a new page as the template if you will of what you want your page to look like. So. Um, I start, what you should do is start out with home01.aspx. These all are going to have an ASPX extension automatically. And then what you can do is then make copies of that. Now one key thing about this that you got to watch out for, your content in the middle of the page, it needs to be the same uh, for every single page. That's the part that you don't want to change, but these are going to be copies of pages. So. How are you going to do that? What I would recommend is using the web part um, to go ahead and have a reference that can be from the same thing. Now I'm using a template that's from the SharePoint dashboard site which allows me to use the list web part to display links. So that way if I ever need to change the navigation I can do it from my list and all of these pages are all referencing that one list so I don't have to repeatedly change this main page content. Um, if you look in here you'll notice this is the 
list web part, I'm using this promoted links template, which is from the SharePoint dashboards.com site. The key thing that you need to keep in mind is that whatever you have in the main page content, um, that is going to need to match across all of these various pages. So I do recommend using a web part. That way, if you need to change the content, you would just need to be able to do that in the web part. All right, so let's start with the beginning of this process. What you're going to do is create your standard page, and you're going to start out with one, you know, like the home 01. And then at that point, what you can do is make copies. So from the pages library, you can go to the context menu from the page, and one of the options is copy to. And once you do copy to, you just click copy here, meaning make a copy of this page in the same location. And it's going to give me a little warning. It says, I already have this here. What do you want me to do? Make sure to pick the first option and say keep both. So it will make a copy and then it's just going to say, well, I can't call it the same thing. I'll come up with something on my own. So it took my copy of 01, home 01 and it made it home 011 because it didn't know what else to do with it. So basically rinse and repeat. You can make as many as you want. My demonstration, I've got 10 different pages and you can decide however many you want to do but um, I would recommend starting out with 10 pages and then you can have as many as you want this is dynamic you can continue to add to it at any time so for as many pages as you want just keep using the copy to and hit copy here and then pick the same option in the warning dialog and say keep both and then it's going to come up with a name that you don't want so you just need to go in there and just put rename and then um, you want these to match the same naming convention. Okay, so if you haven't already guessed, there's a counter going on here. So we're gonna use that to rotate and reference in our workflow. Uh, let me go ahead and rename this one too. And now they're named the way I want for them to be named. Notice for the single digit pages, I lead with a zero one because I want that page name to have the same string length. It just makes things a little bit easier for me. Okay, so we've got um, all these different pages. Now, an additional step that you need to do is to make sure that they're uh, published. So make sure that that's the case. You can batch select and click published. Um, and then you've got these clones of pages. So for any one of these pages, you can just go to it and what we wanted was rotating banner, right? So the way you're gonna do it is just go into the page and you're just gonna change the painter, the <laughs> banner for each of those pages. You click on the browse images, use the stock images option, and then you, you know, do a search. There's of course tens of thousands of images here. It's crazy. Um, but you find an image that looks cool to you, republish, then your page is going to be good to go. So the only thing that's going to be different between these pages is you're going to change the banner image. The, the actual text in the title, you're obviously going to want that to be identical. In my case, I have a page that says marketing home. And as I talked about before, it's going to reference the web part. So that's how you get all your copy, uh, copied pages ready to go. Now we got a couple more steps to get this whole machine prepared so we can have this cool dynamic rotating homepage. So the next thing is we want to have this list that helps us, uh, helps the system keep track of what the current homepage is and what is going to be the next homepage. Okay. So, um, what you need to do is create a new SharePoint list that is going to be very simple. It's going to be a list with one record and you can call it what you like. I recommend just you can call it homepage um, or homepage tracking or something like that. You can leave the title field. It's not really going to be used for anything. Then you're going to need to make some fields. We need two integer number fields. One you can call page number and one called total pages. Page number is keeping track of of that set of home pages that we're rotating through, what's the current one being displayed? Because we're going to have a recurring workflow that's going to execute and it's going to increment that. Each time it comes through, it's going to bump up the page number to the next one um, until it reaches the limit. So the next field is total pages. That just tells our workflow, 
okay, well, how many pages are in this whole set of pages that we're rotating through? What's the limit? What's the highest number? And for us, I've got uh, 10 pages that I want to rotate through. And then there's one last field that's a little bit tricky. We want to have a calculated field that automatically determines, okay, this is the current page. What's the name of the next page to be displayed? So in other words, when the workflow runs, it's going to need to make this call to SharePoint to tell this site to switch and make a new welcome page. And we're gonna have a calculated field to do that. Now I'm gonna include some references in the video, uh, below the video, which you can use to get these code snippets um, since this one is a little bit tricky. Okay, so if I go in here, you'll see I have one calculated field called next page and I got a little bit of a formula going on here to tell it, um, have some logic to help it figure this out. Now, I could do this in Power Automate, but the thing is, it's a lot more convoluted. More steps, more code, um, a little bit harder than if I just use this formula in uh, a calculated field. The idea here is it just is gonna go ahead and pull in the next number, and then it's also checking to see if if it's less than 10 and we want a leading zero because we want the page names to have the same length. Um, but you can just use the code snippet that I'm going to post below the video um, and just paste it right in and you should be good to go. Okay, that's all that you need in the list. It literally is going to be this one single record. One thing to keep in mind, we're going to reference the record number. And when you create a new SharePoint list, the first record created always is going to have an ID of one. So this is the record with ID one. That's important because we're gonna look at the workflow now and I'll help you understand what's going on there. What you're gonna do is create a scheduled workflow. This can be recurring on whatever schedule that you like. And um, the setup for this is pretty straightforward. We're gonna walk through it now. So um, create a new scheduled workflow. You can set the recurrence to be at whatever frequency you want. I've set it for an hour. You can make yours every day, every week. You can make it every five minutes if you want to. That's entirely up to you, um, but uh, you can adjust this over time. Very straightforward. The next thing, just use the get item flow block, and we just need to give it the site address. In my case, I have this marketing site. And then I need to call that special list I made with one record. Um, in my case, I called it home page. And I want the first record, which is ID one. So I say, all right, get me the uh, first record in that list, which is our only record because that's what we're gonna be working with. Okay, now here is the um, key part of this. In order to set that home page, we're gonna call we're gonna use an HTTP request to SharePoint. Now what we're doing is doing something that normally you do manually in the interface. So if you go into your site pages directory, you'll notice in the context menu, there's an option there that says make home page. And uh, that's the manual way you can make that update. Essentially, we're doing this same action through a Power Automate flow. So, um, this URI is important. What we need to do is do an HTTP request to SharePoint, use the post method, and then uh, make sure to use the URI um, shown in the video. And then we've got a bunch of other gobbledygook we got to put in for the headers for this. Um, so uh, once again, I'll uh, paste some code or provide you hyperlinks so you can copy and paste this stuff in here. I certainly confess there's no way I remember all these uh, little pieces of syntax, but you don't really have to worry or think about that. Just copy and paste and you should be good to go. And then in the body tag, this is where we're gonna pull in that special calculated field value for the next page. So what we're doing is telling SharePoint to set a new home page for our site um, in here. That's the key part of it. And that's how the user gets the effect of this new banner that they're going to see on the home page. Pretty cool. And then there's one last final step. We need to update that special list to bump up the number so it gets ready for the next round. So the way we need to do that is just do a regular SharePoint update item block. And you're going to go ahead and designate 
that the page number is going to be incremented. Now this one also requires a little bit of a formula because what we have to do is detect when it hits that top number. So if you have 10 pages and it hits number 10, well, I don't want to increment to 11. I need to go all the way back to the beginning to number one. So um, this is going to detect for that and set that back to one if we hit the max number. So um, again, you don't really have to know or remember the syntax, but um, just go ahead and copy and paste from the references that I put below the video. Um, but that's what the logic does. It basically says, okay, normally just go ahead and make the number one more than it was before. Um, unless if this is um, the you know, same as the max number of pages. In other words, if we're on page 10 of 10, oh, okay, go ahead and set it back to one. That's, that's what that little code block tells it to do. So that goes ahead and updates SharePoint, and then we get to the next one. And that's all there is to it. You know everything you need to know to get this flow kicked off. Now what's cool is you can repeat this pretty easily because of course you can copy and paste all of this for whichever SharePoint site that you wanna do it with. Um, so just to kind of repeat back through the steps, um, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is go into the um, SharePoint site and you need to set up your um, initial home page um, by going to the uh, pages library. So go ahead and create a home page the way you like it and then make copies of it. I'd suggest starting out with having a set of 10. Make sure the naming convention is consistent. And in what I'm showing you would have home 01, home 02, home 03, etc., all the way up to home 10. And then at that point, go into each individual page and select whichever banner it is you like for each of the individual pages. Make sure your pages are published and ready to go. And then your next step was to create that very simple SharePoint list, which is um, what I call home page. It's going to have one record. You can leave the title field. Um, I just put current page in there. And then you're going to create new fields, new number fields for page number and total pages. You can just start your page number at one. It doesn't really matter. This, the workflow is going to keep updating that. And then you're going to use that code snippet for the calculated field. And then at that point, you need to do your scheduled workflow and do these um, code blocks that I showed. Um, and what's cool about this is it's a very short, simple workflow. So it's something very repeatable that you can set up for yourself and do in multiple SharePoint sites. And that's it. You know everything that you need to know for this, just for fun, one more time. To prove it's all working, we'll run the flow one more time. So here's my marketing homepage. You can see if I click on home, you know, here's with the blue lights in the background. I'll go ahead and run uh, my flow and we should see that change. Flow is executed. Go back to marketing home and if I click on home again, see now I've got a different background and that's it. Okay, so I hope you found that interesting. This was uh, just showing you a new concept. Um, this is something, kind of this itch that I've wanted to scratch for a while. I really like this in an uh, old SharePoint site, I have this rotating banner and it keeps things fresh and interesting and it's been something I've wanted to do in SharePoint Online. My hope is in the future that we can more specifically just access and update the um, actual banner image specifically. And it could be that there's an update that comes from Microsoft which makes that easier for us. However, in the meantime, now you know. You've got a great way um, to do this um, get what you want um, with not a lot of complexity and kind of wow your users to have a more dynamic and interesting uh, user experience. Um, so, good luck!